We want to make punching or hitting like in Muck and Squid Game made by Daddy. That's very understandable because it's very very satisfying to play around with and I think I've made something that mimics that pretty well and it's a super easy setup so we can get you going in no time. I'll just start by looking at what I have here. These are my enemies. As you can see I have a stick in my hand and I can bonk these enemies and they will die and take damage. And as you can see it works with the animation and everything and it's very satisfying to play around with. So let's get started. So for the sake of efficiency, I'm first of all not going to go too deep into the player setup. This is a very basic player controller as I also use in my multiplayer tutorials. And let me just remove all the components that I just used to test with. So one of them is the player hit that we're going to be making again. I also just gave him a body. There's nothing special about that. And I give him a stick in his hand that also has a script, which we're also going to be removed. Now this stick does have an animation and I'm going to stick to having this animation on the stick as well as the enemies having a little bouncing animation when they get hit. And I'm not going to be redoing these animations. This isn't much of an animation animation tutorial as much as it's just really a basic hitting tutorial. So let's move on. Let me also remove the script from the enemies and let me get started. So first things first is we need the script for the player actually hitting. So I'm just going to be calling this player punch and let's open up that script. Now in player punch, there's a few things that we need to know right off the bat. So let me make a serialized field. This is in order to keep them private, but still edit them in the inspector. One thing that I want to know is the damage that we're going to be dealing. For my sake, I'm just going to do five and let me just copy this because we're going to be needing this a little bit more. Now the next thing that I want to know is the animator. I want to get the animator because of course the animation is a big part of this. Now the way that hitting actually works in this system at least is that I use what's called the physics.overlap sphere. This is basically a raycast but rather than raycasting a single direction and trying to hit something I'm raycasting in a general area in the shape of a sphere. So for this sphere we need to know its position relative to the player and we need to know its radius. So let's start by getting these. First of all is the sphere radius. For my sake I'm just going to set that to 0.5f because that's what worked for me. Now I'm also going to have the sphere in front variable which is not great naming i didn't know what to call it this is basically how far in front of the player the sphere will be and then the height of the sphere so i'm just going to call this sphere height which for my sake was just zero now we're also going to need a bool to check that we actually can hit and trigger the animation in order for the player not to be able to spam it faster than they can actually punch. So this is going to be a private bool underscore can hit. Now what's very interesting about this setup and also I'm going to set it to true from default. But what's very interesting about this setup is I'm actually having everything controlled by the animation. So when the player can hit again, that's decided by that when the animation is done. And when the player actually tries to hit things in front of him with the overlap sphere, that is also dependent on the timing of the animation. So let's start by just setting it up in the update loop just the very basic input so input dot get key down and for my sake it's just going to be key code dot mouse zero which is the left mouse button now opening this up we just got to check if the bool is true or not so if can hit we can do one thing and if we cannot hit we can just debug dot log to say that we're not ready to hit yet debug dot log can't hit this can be useful for testing. And now in the can hit part of the it statement, we are just going to make a new void or a new method that I'm just going to call start hit. And this is what's going to be called from in here. Now in this start hit, we of course, first of all, want to just set the can hit equals to false to make sure that we can't hit twice. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to go on to the animator and trigger the animation. So let's have a closer look at how my animation is set up. So going on to this stick and the animator, you can see that I just have a basic idle state set from default. And then I have the swinging animation. And as you can see up here on the parameters i've set up a new trigger that's called hit so this is exactly what we want to do we want to trigger this so if we grab the animator dot set trigger and then we can just call it whatever it's named in our case it's named hit and now this will actually trigger the animation now we also want a way for can hit to be set back to true once the animation is done and this will actually be done through a public variable that we're gonna call we can call it end hit or can hit or whatever we want to do i'm just going to call it end hit and this is where we set can hit equals to true again and for that sake we might as well just look a little bit into the future for when we're also going to be checking whether we've hit something so i'm just going to make one that's called check hit as well we're just going to leave these empty for now so going back into looking at the animation if i select the swinging animation or the stick so i can see the animation you can see that i've set up these little notes here so let me just delete those to show you how they work now in my case the animation or the animator which we're on is not actually on the same place at which the hitting script is on so let me just put the player punch script on here and let me populate it with the animator here and as you can see this animator is not on the same object as the script is the animator is on the stick and the issue with these events is they can only call on the same object so we need to make an intermediate script this script is going to do nothing other than just calling from the stick animator to the player that's all it's going to be doing so let's just call this we can just call this 
player stick or just stick for that sake. So I'm just going to call it stick and I'm going to put this onto the stick of the player here. Now all this is going to be taking in is the player's punch or player punch. So I'm just going to do serialized field, private, player punch. So we can just populate it manually and I'm just going to call this player punch. And then in here we're actually going to be making the exact same functions as we do here. So let me just make these again. And rather than can hit, we're just going to grab the player punch dot end hit as well here. And we're going to be doing the same down here for the check hit. Now, I hope this makes sense. This is once again an intermediate layer. So the stick script here is just on the same object as the as the animator. And so therefore it can call onto the player from here. So this is really just a middleman. Uh, this stick script is just an empty middleman. That's all it does. Just calls from the animator and into this. So it's really just a kind of a tunnel. You could also have technically have the player punch script directly on the stick. If you'd rather do that, then you can make it sort of weapon decided. It's not a bad way to do it at all. This is just how my setup is now. I'm just going to pop populate the player into here and now let's set up these events so if we go out here and look at the stick we can see it where the punch finishes obviously that's going to be on the very last frame now i've had some issues with the events actually not triggering on the very last frame i'm just going to go a few frames back just to give the player a little bit of leeway here and just add it here and it's typically going to be the bottom one so if i just move my mouse to the top and i click up once i'll jump to the bottom and as you can see here, we have end hit and check hit. So this is going to be the end hit one that we place here. And then somewhere here in the middle of the swing, that can be right here, for example, we can add the next event and go up and call check hit. So this is where we start actually checking whether the player has hit something in front of them. Now, all we basically need to do is setting up the enemy to have some kind of health. And we also need to be setting up this check hit. So actually, let's start with the enemy. So if we go into script here, create, and then I'm just going to call this enemy health and we can add this onto the enemy so opening up the enemy health script there's only very little that we want to do here obviously it needs to hold the health so i'm just going to have a private int that's called health and let's just set it to 10 from standard now in my case he also had a little bobbing animation so i want to add the animator to him as well and we can just grab this privately and we can just grab that in a wake so we can just say underscore animator equals to get component of the type of animator and now we can make the functionality that gets called when he gets hit so let's make a public void let's just call hit and in here we're going to figure out how much damage does he take from the player and obviously we've got to take the health and subtract the damage and now we're also going to grab the animator and i'm just going to set trigger to hit because that's what i called it on him so let me just go show you that really quickly so you can see he has this little animation here if i go onto his animator you can see he also has a parameter that's called hit which is what triggers this little bobbing animation where he grows big and small really quickly and then from here we can just do a quick check and say if the health is less than or equals to zero we can call some functionality that we're just going to call die so so let me just make a void die here and obviously we're going to destroy him himself and i also had little particles spawning so let me just handle that as well so let me do a serialized field private particle system i'm just going to call this death particles and i'm of course also going to show you how those are set up and then all i want to do is just instantiate these death particles at his current position just like so so now let me go add those death particles and just show you really quickly the important setup of those so if i enter the death particles here you can see it's just this little explosion that happens of just red uh, squares you can see looping is off i have play on awake on and the stop action is set to destroy these are really all the important ones for the setup which means that it will play immediately as soon as it's spawned it will not keep looping and once it's done playing it will just destroy itself again in the hierarchy so now all we need to do is just be able to hit the enemy so let's go back into the player punch and what we're going to be doing here is first of all as i mentioned we need to use the physics.overlap sphere and as you could just see here as well it returns a collider array so what we can do is we can make a collider array that we're going to call colliders is equals to our overlap sphere and then in here we need to put the information of the sphere which is what we already set up here so first of all that's the position of it we need to grab our player's position because we want it relative to him and then we want it in front of him so it's transformed that forward times however much we set this sphere in front of you and then we also add the height to it which is in the, our case for him the transform dot up times the sphere height now this is the position of it and i'm gonna visually show this to you in just a second we're also gonna set up this sphere radius now in order to check that this sphere actually sits correctly we can completely copy this line and then unity has some super nice features to draw debugging tools so if we just do avoid on draw gizmos selected and then in here you can write gizmos.color we can set whatever color we want so that can be equal to color.yellow and then we can do gizmos.draw wire sphere which is the top one here there we go 
and I can just paste in this exact information of the sphere. As long as these two data are the same, we will now be seeing a sphere drawn out in the world of where the player will be hitting or checking the hit. So if we go into the player, you can now see there's a yellow sphere floating around in front of him, which is where the hit is going to be done. So if this looks right, if it doesn't, you can just play around with the settings out here. And as you can see, it modifies it directly, which is super handy for debugging. Now back to doing the actual hit. So what we need to do now is we need to loop through all everything that we've just hit inside of this colliders array. So we can just call these calls like so and with this setup just in order to not confuse you this is of type collider not just var you can just use var it will figure it out itself and what we now need to do is if we have hit something that has the enemy health script on it so if call dot try get component out enemy health and we can just call that enemy and if that's the case if we've hit somebody that has the enemy health script on him we can go enemy dot hit and then input our damage and this should just work now if every time that we attack the check hit will be called at the right timing it will loop through everything that we've hit in front of us and if one of those things happens to be something that has the enemy health on it it will go onto the enemy health and call hit so if i go in here we can see that hit now deducts the damage triggers the hitting animation and checks if it's dead and if it's dead it will spawn the particles and destroy itself it's really that simple i hope that logic makes sense so let's go test it out and as you can see there he just bobbed i hit him if i do it again he will die now we can spawn a bunch of enemies and have some fun playing around with that and would you look at that it just works i think this is personally a very satisfying system obviously if you want to do it even more you could technically have more checks along the line so there might for example be a check when the weapon's out here a check when the weapon's here and a check when the weapon's over here if you want to have like a wide arc of able to hit then it will look like it's very smooth the whole idea is really that the animation is fast enough to really give off the idea that you're just hitting it i really hope that this was helpful to you if it was a like a comment and a subscribe is very much appreciated and overall i just hope that you have a wonderful day